In this video, I'll tell you how to test drive a paint job on your models before you even pick up a brush. So if you're trying to paint uh, your models based off of the paint scheme from the book, so you're going to paint your uh, Malifaux Guild people to look like they do on the box, or you're going to paint your Ultramarines to look like they do in the books or whatever, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I like to do that on a lot of things myself. But sometimes you want to kind of go in a different direction and you want to try something cool or different or whatever, but you kind of get this sort of, at least if you're me, self-doubt. Self-doubt can slow us down more than we would like, and it can make us kind of uh, overthink what we need to do and not actually get the job done. I can't tell you how many times in the past I've looked at some models and say, well, I want to do this with them, but I just don't know how it's going to look, and I'm not sure, and I'm, eh, I'm not, yeah. Um, a difference between my wife and I is that when we're rearranging a room or when we move into a new place or something like that, what she wants to do is bring all the furniture into that room and just kind of move it around and move it around until eventually she finds what she's looking for. I, however, like to plan ahead and measure the room and put it in the computer and then figure out the size of the furniture and then move it all around in the computer because it's a lot easier, it's a lot less lifting. So I started to think to myself recently when I was going to start painting some Tyranids for my Kill Team uh, Tyranid list, and I've never painted Tyranids before, well, why don't I just use the computer to figure out what they ought to look like? Now, a long time ago, I made a video about looking at nature and being able to look at like Google image search pictures of nature and figure out how to take that into painting your lizardmen or your tyranids or any other kind of thing. If you got to paint uh, a wolf or a lion, go look at pictures of lions and wolves and figure out kind of what colors you want to use from there. If you want to watch that video, pachow. But if you kind of want to make up your own thing, you don't want to necessarily paint it on a model and then be like, well, that doesn't look right at all, and then have to reprime it or to strip it and then reprime it or whatever, and then start over again. So what I decided was like, why don't I just use the technology that I have available to me so that I can figure it out ahead of time before I even pick up the brush? Step one, you can put together the models that you're going to be doing. If you want to prime them like a lighter color, you can do that. I knew with these Tyranids that I was going to be using some sort of tan color somewhere in there, so I primed them ahead of time with tan. If you prime them white, you can do that too, but even if you just keep them gray plastic, that's fine. It may take a little bit more work on your part in the computer portion of it, but just having them a decent photograph of the models in a position where you can kind of see a lot of different parts of the models is really what you're looking for. If you need to take a picture with your phone and you're not quite sure how to make it look as good as possible, Pachow again, and uh, you can kind of basically get your baseline imagery and then you move to the next step, which is starting to figure out how to put the colors on there in the computer and figure out which colors work best and which ones don't. Now I'm a computer graphics nerd. It's part of my job. It's part of what I do here on the channel. So I've got Photoshop. Uh, I assume that most people don't because it is crazy expensive. So what I'm going to tell you to do, and I'm going to put some links down below, there are plenty of different, uh, even web browser based kind of Photoshop knockoffs. They're not knockoffs, but they do sort of some of the same things that Photoshop does. They don't do all the stuff that Photoshop does, obviously, but they do some of the same things and they're free and you can find them right online. You don't have to download them onto your computer. They actually just work in the browser. You got to have like, I think Flash or something installed, but they work pretty well. Um, Pixlr is a big one that I've used in the past and also Sumo Paint. So what you can do is take your image, upload it to one of these programs, put it there on the screen. Now you can see it. Um, in a lot of situations, like you could probably try to change it to black and white. That might help you out a little bit. Uh, and normally, depending on the software, there will be different settings on how you can make it black and white. Um, you can also maybe change the brightness levels and things like that. If you were using the unpainted versions, the darker gray plastic is maybe not the best base. So you might want to go in there and figure out how to change the settings so that that dark gray plastic becomes more of a medium gray, because that will be better to kind of put your overlays on, which we're going to get to next. So now that you've got your image there, you want to put a new layer over the top of it. And what a layer is, is it's just basically kind of almost like a, think of it like a piece of clear plastic that you've now put over your first piece of artwork and now you can draw on that. And then if you want to move it or take it away or modify it, you can do that and it won't affect the piece underneath it. You don't want to try to make changes 
directly to the photograph because then if you goof up, you have to start over again. Whereas if it's a layer and you goof up a layer real bad, you can just delete the layer and throw down a new layer. Pretty much all those different softwares, whether it's super crazy expensive um, Photoshop or some people like to use GIMP, which is a free downloadable piece of software that's kind of like Photoshop. But if you're gonna use that or one of those web-based ones, they all allow you to drop another layer down over the original image and then do the work on that layer. Okay, so you wanna do that. And then you can go through and just start to color over the parts that you're thinking, well, I might wanna make this part blue or I wanna make it tan or whatever and start doing that. When you do that, you kind of are building a template. That template for that part, like with my Tyranids here, I decided to do all the bony parts on one layer and then I did all the less bony parts on another layer and I kept them separate so that if I wanted to see what the dark parts looked like, in just the bony parts, I could just hit a couple little switches over on the side, turn layers on and off. You don't have to delete them if you don't want to see them. You can just make them visible versus non-visible. And then you could see what the color looks like on top of the model if the bony parts were the, the dark part and the you know body part was tan. But you could also then just flip it and see what it looks like if the bony parts are tan and the body parts are dark. The other big benefit to having separate layers like this is you can do a couple different things to modify these layers. Number one, you can change the opacity. So if you want to see kind of what it's going to look like if you just put a dark wash over it, you can just dial back the opacity to maybe only 10% or something like that. And that might look a little bit more like what a wash was going to look like as opposed to I'm painting it just straight on, you know, and completely covering everything up with a color. So being able to modify that is really cool. Also, pretty much every piece of software out there, whether it's these web-based ones or the big, you know, big shot like Photoshop, they will also have what's known as color overlay. So in these models, I painted mainly black to get the bony parts on the Tyranid and then also the skin parts in the Tyranid. But then it's a very simple thing to go to color overlay and have, let's say, the bony layer turned on and just change that to red or change it to blue, anything along those lines. So I can kind of now compare and see and figure out, okay, well maybe this would look better if this was green and this part was black, or this part is yellow and this part is orange. I don't know. Being able to kind of figure out and play with it without having to actually make any painting happen can really help build your confidence when it's time to actually put paint to bristle and bristle to model. So give it a try. Take some decent pictures of your unpainted models bring them into whatever software you use, whether it's something fancy like Photoshop or whether it's something free like GIMP or something web-based and free like um, Pixlr or Sumo Paint or any of the others that are out there like that, and kind of get used to figuring out how to color the parts you want to color, make the transparencies, do all that kind of stuff. Um, look at blending modes too. Pretty much any of those pieces of software on a layer by layer level will have blending modes like multiply or darken or screen. Those can also help uh, kind of simulate a little bit of like what you're trying to do if you're doing a wash or a glaze or straight paint. There's a lot of different options. Do a little bit of learning if you're interested. This is not a quick and simple, I'm just going to tap on it and see that it color changes. It takes a little bit of work, but with that little bit of work, you can save yourself tons of time and money uh, down the road by not having to strip and restart over with your models. You can figure out your paint scheme before you even get painting. I think you'll be a lot happier.